But when you go to a neighborhood like this one, which is, you know, lower on uh, the quality scale, much higher on the risk scale, right? You're in like a DF type neighborhood, probably closer to F, okay? Uh, you're going to get high risk tenants regardless. Is that a hot dog warmer? Oh, dude, hot dog maker? A couple hot dogs calm down. <laughs> yeah, it's... It's almost a car crash. We went and we missed a crime, dude. Dude, it's my luck they hit my Oh, well, Section 8 tenants are super risky. Yeah, no, they definitely are. Uh, but compared to what, right? Their level of risk can be higher or lower depending on what you're comparing it to. And in this particular situation, their level of risk is actually the lowest risk level that you as investors can get. Yeah, see if I can get them in the basement. Creepy. Hello, anybody down here? Safety. <laughs> there, there's one missing here, I think. There should I think be. what's not missing is... They were down here. You oh, up. Oh, you don't yeah. see that every day. I, don't know what that is, but I think that's a carburetor. <laughs> just, just had to know. <gasps> yeah, I know. I saw that that's too. Classic, dude. Welcome to the Investment Properties for Sales Show, folks. Thing is selling at or above list. We are going to provide you guys with complete transparency and education. We take you to the video tour. Won't watch TV, giving it to you straight. Cleveland, man, the land of Section Eight, y'all. How about a triplex for fifty-four thousand nine hundred? Right? That's what I got for you. Nine oh eight Parkwood, Cleveland, four four one oh eight. Right? This is the land of Section 8, y'all, because you got to go Section 8 on properties like this, right? This particular property is in a neighborhood where uh, Section 8 is really going to be the name of the game for y'all. I know some investors out there, you know, they may try to take these types of assets and, and run them without Section 8. Uh, because they have the idea that Section 8 tenants are rough, they're tough, they're they're bad, right? And... That is and is not the correct way of thinking, right? Here's the deal. Section 8 tenants typically are going to be rough. They're going to be tough. They're going to be very difficult to deal with, okay? But what you guys have to understand is it's really the neighborhood that is going to bring you a certain type of tenant, and then you're going to get that certain type of tenant, and they're either going to be Section 8 or they're going to not be Section 8, right? Like, for instance, if you had a property, a triplex in what I would consider to be like a B-grade neighborhood in the Cleveland real estate market, and by the way, when I say B-grade neighborhood, I'm referring to the grades given to the Cleveland neighborhoods uh, in the Ultimate Guide to Grading Cleveland Neighborhoods. This is a guide. It's a living guide. I published it almost 10 years ago. I published it back in 2015. I've linked it to the show notes below. And as things in the market change, I update the guide, right? In that guide, I've graded all the neighborhoods on an A to F scale, okay? So utilizing that guide, uh, going over like the neighborhood characteristics that I would consider to be like a B grade neighborhood based on what you read in that guide, y'all. If you have like a triplex in a B grade neighborhood, first of all, you're going to be paying two hundred fifty to three hundred thousand dollars for it right now. You ain't going to be able to buy it for no fifty four nine, okay? But if you have like a B grade neighborhood, you're going to get what I would consider to be like B grade tenants most likely. And when you're in a B grade neighborhood, tenants on Section Eight are going to be more risky uh, than cash paying tenants in B grade neighborhoods, okay? But when you go to a neighborhood like this one, which is you know lower on uh, the quality scale, much higher on the risk scale, right? Right? You're in like a DF type neighborhood, probably closer to F. OK, uh, you're going to get high risk tenants regardless. So when you're at this level of risk, you're, all your tenants, almost all the tenants looking at this property are going to be a high level of risk for you. And at that point, when they're all very risky, the Section 8 tenants actually represent a much lower level of risk for you because the biggest issue with low-income areas like this is actually getting people to pay the rent on time every single month. And with Section 8, that risk is completely alleviated because the government pays most of, if not all, of their rent, right? So you're already getting a high-risk tenant base, folks. Go with the Section 8 tenants because they pose a lower level of risk when everybody who's usually interested in neighborhoods of this quality are going to be fairly high risk. I hope that makes sense for you because I get a lot of people that are like, oh, Section 8 tenants are super risky. Yeah, no, they definitely are. 
Uh, but compared to what, right? Their level of risk can be higher or lower depending on what you're comparing it to. And in this particular situation, their level of risk is actually the lowest risk level that you as investors can get. So when you're buying high-risk properties in high-risk neighborhoods like this one, y'all, the name of the game, it's Section 8. That's how you make money. I've made millions of dollars utilizing Section 8 at properties just like this one. And this one is a blank slate for you, right? You got to, you know, redo everything on the studio upstairs right that that's been totally gutted out it's got roughed in plumbing and stuff in there so you got to totally put that one back together so you're probably going to spend if you wanted to get that one up and running probably like at least 30 okay and then the other two units probably like maybe 10 each unit right so uh you can get it fully rocking and rolling as a duplex with probably a total of like twenty thousand dollars and then if you want to drop fifty thousand dollars you could have a triplex and you could be bringing in two thousand six hundred ninety dollars and my recommendation of course would be to go with the section eight program right you're going to have to get it lead certified while you're doing your renovations as well and if you have questions about cleveland's lead certification process just like that ultimate guide to grading cleveland neighborhoods the lead certification information is also linked below for you guys. That's what we do here on Holton Wise TV. We provide you guys with the education and information you need to be successful in the Cleveland market. So with all that said, all you need to do from here is either send in your offers or ask to get a tour. If you want to tour this property yourself, get in there, bring a contractor with you, whatever, that's totally fine with me. Just send us an email, sales at HoltonWise.com. If you hit us up before 5 o'clock, we will get you in there same day. If not, we'll get you in there the very next day. If you want to make an offer, include your proof of funds. And we're only going to be accepting cash offers on this one. This one's not going to qualify for financing because it needs renovations. Uh, so go ahead and send those to our team, sales at holtonwise.com. Just include an email, put the address, 908 Parkwood. Let us know you want to pay 55 cash and then give me your proof of funds. And if you want to do like a bird deal or a refinance later and you need money, let us know. We have a whole Rolodex of lenders. I've done $200 million worth of sales in the Cleveland market and out through the rest of Ohio. Uh, with investors from all over the world. Uh, so I've really built up a huge network of investor lenders. So if you'd like my list of lenders who can help you out with the refinance down the road, just let me know. Sales at HoltonWise.com. Just ask for my list. I will get that to you. Let's go. Yeah, I didn't clear it, but I mean, I think we're, I think we'd be all right. Yeah, it seems pretty quiet in here. No, it seems like there's two bedrooms back there. That's a closet. Another closet. Yeah, well, that, I don't know if that's technically a closet, dude. It's, yeah. I don't know that that should count as a closet. Ooh, I'll count it, dude. It's a room with the... <laughs> okay. No, never mind. <laughs> yeah, it's... Damn, it's almost a car crash. We went and we missed a crime, dude. Dude, with my luck, they'd hit my fucking car. That would not be funny. Well, we stick around for five more minutes. We'll see more crime. That's fine. It's the east side of Cleveland. There are. Jesus. It's in the closet. Careful where you start. Yeah. Oh, man. All right. Oh, is there a fire next door? It looks like there was. Yeah, I think it had to be because the front porch is all fucked off too. There's a pile of burnt beans down there too. Then I feel like we go upstairs and then after we do that, we'll go in the back hall see if we can get Yeah, see if I can get them in the basement. This door, you said? No, 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 back here. Oh. Don't know where that goes, honestly. This should be the third unit. Oh, it's not. It is. Okay. Maybe there's just two ways up. Yeah. Somebody's right, fucking up that door. Could just be the wind. Holy fuck. This is a whole separate unit? Yeah. Is this supposed to be a fucking sliding door? Or 
No, it was, it was a wall. It's a track almost. It was a wall to separate the like living area from whatever this is. Yeah, and then there's the other fucking access point. Yep. Just gonna hit this corner. Just one biggest unit. Yeah, it'd be a nice studio. Look at all this. Some wall missing. More wall missing. I can get into the bottom unit from here. You can? Yeah. Oh, okay, dope. Back door's missing. Uh. Uh. So was the implication that there is electricity down here? I said no. I said first floor had no. Oh, I meant upstairs. My bad. Yeah, it might be just off entirely. You gotta love when your workers are smashing some MDs in the middle of the day. Just means they're working hard, dude. I came here to lay tile and get drunk, and I'm all out of tile. <laughs> Nice. These are cool though. You don't see these. These usually get ripped totally out. These little benches over yep. there? Yeah, that's like, like all this woodworking. Yeah. Like the doors and shit. Those are cool as fuck. Definitely old school. This is laid out exactly like a uh, 123rd. I mean, yeah. minus that. You're right. You are right. Holy bedroom. It's got another giant bathroom. Crack it in the closet. Oh, J shit. JK. You never know, dude. Oh, look at the ceiling. Is that, is that a hot dog warmer? Oh, dude, hot dog maker? Oh, hot dogs calm down. <laughs> Man, I didn't see any wicker chairs for us to burn, though. Damn. Where was that? Hey, the ceilings in here are all sorts of fun. Yeah. Oops, wrong button. Wrong button. You like exposed pipes? Not a pipe I can expose to you. Exposed pipes. A lot of tools left behind too. You think there's any new ports in here still? Nope, oh, it's empty. Could have figured that. <laughs> Here's another one of those baby closets. Closet that shouldn't be a closet. I'm not exactly sure what was insulation tape. Not exactly sure what was going on in here that they needed the back of the toilet and a gas can. They were just doing like jankum or something. I don't know. <laughs> they were shitting into the gas <laughs> can. <laughs> oh, there's the rest of the toilet. Okay, never mind. They just moved it out of the way. Yeah, that insulation tape right there is fucking I'm gonna get some smack tape. Yeah. My brother gets insulation tape from the uni. Wash your feet, dude. There's a yeah. lot of fucking. I'd hate for you to get tetanus on the east side. I mean, I do got these big ass boots. Alright. Yeah, that insulation tape, my brother gets it from the uni jobs he does. It's fucking like some of the best tape. Just to show you guys these fucking comical closets. You couldn't, I mean, there's nothing you could put in there. You couldn't put a dress in there. I don't even think I could fit. <laughs> Alright, now the scary. This was not scary at all, man. You went down there already? Yeah, no. Huh. I took one look and I was like, oh, that's... I'll save that for Matt. He'll go there, honey. Matt will go down there. Oh, you're the power looker. He's fucking. <laughs> 
dollars. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> that explains it. Creepy. Hello, anybody down here? Any crackheads? Ghosts? Ghosts of crackheads? Any ghouls? It is Halloween after all. Oh, what? A box, a fucking bin of wire. Oh, look at that fucking air purifier over there. Is it space heater? <laughs> space is scary as fuck, though. Oh, those are your electric panels with no covers on them. That's fun. As is tradition. That's a pretty nice hot water tank, though. It looks newer. The furnace? However, uh, not so much. This. Well, that's too much upstairs, bro. Yeah, there, there's one missing here, I think. There should I think be. what's not missing is fucking cobwebs. There's what is that? Income, dude. They were down here getting fucked up. Oh, dude, this one's better. This one's in much better shape. You close that front door? Uh, I can't remember. Oh, fuck, dude. Yeah, I don't know. I'll tell you what I do know, though. They were doing some jankum down here. Fuck is talking upstairs. The okay. Oh, you don't yeah. see that every I don't day. Know what that is? But I think that's a carburetor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and another one. A couple, couple two tree carburetors. All right, let's get the fuck out of here. This place is creepy. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna stop here. Where's that go? No. Oh, it's a ladder. Yeah. I thought I was looking at it too. Like, what the fuck? Just had to know. <gasps> yeah, I know. I saw that. That's too. fucking classic, dude. Oh, I gotta get these. I didn't get these. Safety. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a can of mixed nuts in there. I was about to be excited as fuck. All right, 16 minute video, yep. done. Let's get out of here. Let's see, maybe if the drone will fly at this one, I'll yep. put a sign in there. Maybe. I'm a fucking way. Hold up, I am gonna try to. Yeah, rebarricade that door. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.